David Kennedy is alongside me. How did this race going to pan out, David? Well, it's over 10 laps. Uh, we've got some very experienced drivers in there. Brennan McKenna, notably, he's been the uh, wrong side of uh, 40 by a large mar margin. He is uh, superbly experienced, and uh, watch him. He's uh, sitting on the outside, on the right-hand side of your screen, second quickest. And uh, Neil Shanahan on pole position at 1 minute 12.59. And uh, Brendan McKenna, 1 minute 14.22. Yeah, that would suggest that uh, Neil Shannon would have a lot in hand on the likes of Brendan McKenna, who's on the long side. If he's doing two seconds a lap after 10 laps, of course, he'll be 20 or 30 seconds ahead of him, which will be about uh, half the distance of the straight. But uh, Neil Shanahan, car number 44 there, at the all-white. He is, of course, uh, 18 years of age, a student run by Mick Merrigan Motorsports, driving in the Van Diemen RF92. Uh, three years of karting, his debut season in cars, and what a season he's had so far. Runner-up in the 1996 Irish Formula A Karting Championship. This year, what a performance. Seven wins, six pole positions, five facet laps, and the winner already of the 1997 DHL Star of Tomorrow Championship on 140 points. He's certainly won for the future. And any time now, we will get that uh, race underway. The national flag is raised, and away they go first time, and it is Neil Shannon, as we expected, the pole sitter, who gets the best start, the Formula Ford. 1600 Kent race over 10 laps overall and uh, John Burton's got a very good start and trying round the outside it is Brendan McKenna will he hold it there no he won't Neil Shannon is very clever close to the door here but of course that allows John Burton to close up somewhat and take that second place but uh, a very good start from Neil Shannon and also a very good start from Brendan McKenna yeah, you don't need really high dramatics on these corners of the early laps you've got long straights here where you can slipstream by and Part of the circuit where they reach 110, 115 miles an hour here. Down to first gear, very tight corner, really from the back of itself. Very slick here with all the white uh, paint that you see, or uh, chalk dust that the oil lay down. And off they go, on to feed straight. Michael Cohan, we hear, has pulled off at the first corner in car number 14, so that's the end of his race, we believe. But Neil Shannon is the pole sitter and also our leader as they come down the Fiat straight heading towards the Alfa Romeo corner and this as you can see a lot of uh, cement has been put down from the earlier races and they're just blazing a trail through that but uh, McKenna is holding a watching brief now in second place and they come down the Dunlop straight and this is where Shanahan can certainly get ahead because he does have the fastest car in a straight line maybe in the corners McKenna can get close and also Burke and Burke is trying down the inside just has a little look but I think that uh, McKenna will have the proper line going down into Dublin Crystal Corner and down onto the Coca-Cola Strait. And it is Shanahan, McKenna, and Burke. There's quite a contrast in ages here. 40 plus for Brendan McKenna in second place. The wily old fox, Jason, the very young and uh, inexperienced Neil Shanahan. Uh, just a little bit of a breathing space, but still not enough to relax on his tail and looking still very serious. You know when he's late on the brakes, uh, McKenna getting it quite late. And he understeers there, and he's got a lead. He's taken the lead. onto the grass. In fact, he should have just kept going there and got the grass because uh, he just braked and had to reverse the car and uh, McKenna now is the lead. Well, you probably know something that we don't and uh, if you look at the nose cone on this car, it's running very close to the ground there, second place car. And uh, what he did is if he went off on the force with the nose that low, low he could have probably dug it into the ground and lost the nose cone and possibly have taken the radiator off. But now we'll see the lap time because that five laps was trying to go. His best lap was over minute 13 uh, eight. So really to catch him, he's a good three or four seconds now behind. He's got to put in a lap of a second to a second and a half quicker than approaching. With Neil Shanahan, car number 44, getting ever closer as they head up now towards Alfa Romeo Corner. He's got to be very, very careful as they go around here that he doesn't let the back end of the car step out as they come onto the Dunlop Strait for the penultimate time. This is our leader at the battle for the lead between Brent and McKenna as they go over the start finish line. And Neil Shannon, car number 44, he has a look down the inside, decides no. Discretion the better part of Valero at that stage. He might get him down to Murray Glen. But he's right under his gearbox as they go down the Coco straight towards Murray Glen. Can he take him here? He had a good toe out of the corner. He should be able to be able to come alongside him. A very uh, dodgy maneuver there. He should give him a little bit of room on the outside, certainly. But uh, you're not allowed to be from left to right. You take the inside line and you can move out a little bit. But this is uh, getting into a very grey area. You can try the outside again here. But this is the most difficult place to overtake. I don't think he can do it. They're neck and neck. It's a Well, 
I don't think that uh, Brendan McKenna can find a reverse there. That was just uh, Gabe Neil Shanahan's move, but that was a uh, dodgy overtaking maneuver there. Uh, as you can see once again. Now again, Neil Shannon on the outside, on the right-hand side of your screen, is in the tougher area to outbreak. It's much bumpier here, and now it's a standoff. He really, what he's trying to do, he knows he can't go around the outside there, but he's just intimidated him into going on. Worked perfectly well. The presence of mind, grabbed reverse, and away he went. Takes the checkered flag. Well, Brendan McKenna there will be absolutely disgusted with that, but in fairness now, Brendan McKenna just went straight on. He never actually took the corner at all. He was far more concerned about what was going alongside with Neil Shannon. Neil Shanna had the presence of mind to slam it into reverse and get around the corner. And there's Brendan McKenna coming up now, way down the field after not being able to find reverse. But uh, unfortunately, he blew it down in Furry Glen. Indeed, he was intimidated by the youngster and led into a very old trap. That was, uh, he should have, could have backed off and let uh, Neil Shanahan run on. But uh, easy, easier said than done. It's very tricky there, very slippery. We saw Neil Shannon himself make a mistake there on lap five going on, lap six going on straight there himself. Yes, that was a, an excellent end to the race. Neil Shanahan wins then in the Van Diemen. Second place goes to John Burke in the Mondial with Trevor Austin, car number 27 in the Crossley, having an excellent race, moving up to finish third.